More than 70 million military personnel participated in World War I, a conflict that changed the course of history. Imagine the enormity of that number. This wasn't a small skirmish or a regional battle, but a global catastrophe that spanned continents and shook nations. At the heart of this conflict were the Central Powers, comprised of Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire. On the other side of the battlefield were the Allied Powers, a formidable force made up of the United Kingdom, France, and Russia. These key players, with their complex alliances and intricate political machinations, set the stage for a war that would redefine the world as we know it. Despite the grand scale and far-reaching consequences of this war, its inception was rooted in a single tragic event. World War I, a global conflict of unprecedented scale, began with the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria. This unforeseen catastrophe would ignite the flame that led to the cataclysm of World War I. The assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand on June 28, 1914, set in motion a series of events that led to the largest war the world had ever seen. On screen, a female presenter dressed in crisp formals appears. As she speaks, she traces the path of history with her hands. Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria, heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, was assassinated in Sarajevo, the capital of Bosnia. The man behind the trigger was Gavrilo Princip, a member of the Serbian Nationalist Secret Society known as the Black Hand. This assassination, a spark in the tinderbox of Europe, would soon ignite a devastating inferno. So how this single event lead to a world at war? The presenter's voice becomes more serious now. Well, the answer lies in a tangled web of alliances that had been crafted over the years. You see, the major powers of the time had formed complex alliances, promising mutual support in case of conflict. She walks us through a table of alliances rooted in the past. The assassination of the Archduke led Austria-Hungary to declare war on Serbia, setting this domino effect into motion. Russia, bound by a treaty to Serbia, announced the mobilization of its vast army in her defense. She moves her hand over a map detailing the alliances and potential conflicts. Germany, allied to Austria-Hungary by treaty, viewed the Russian mobilization as an act of war against Austria-Hungary and after scant warning, declared war on Russia. France, bound by an alliance with Russia, found itself at war with Germany and by extension with the Austro-Hungarian Empire. She continues with her narration as she guides us through the intricate web of alliances and impending conflicts. Across the sea, Britain, allied to France with an Entente Cordiale, declared war against Germany. It was a conflict that spread like wildfire, fueled by the alliances of the time, and soon, nations across the world were drawn into the fray. This domino effect of nations declaring war on each other, each one bound by duty, honor, and the written word of their alliances, led to a conflict of unprecedented scale. The world, teetering on the brink of massive change, watched in apprehension and dread. The world held its breath as these powerful nations took a step towards a devastating conflict. And thus, the stage was set for the First World War. A war that would redefine the very concept of warfare and alter the course of history forever. Our presenter concludes with a look of solemnity, an echo of the gravity of the events she's just relayed. Imagine living in a world where death could strike at any moment and your home is a muddy, rat-infested trench. Welcome to the reality of World War I's Western Front, where soldiers were shrouded in an atmosphere of perpetual uncertainty and fear. Here, the trenches were not just trenches. They were narrow, winding graves dug into the earth, where men lived and fought for months on end amidst the squalor and stench. The trenches were uninviting homes to millions of soldiers. Their beds were muddy grounds, and their roommates were often rats and lice. Disease was rampant, and the threat of enemy fire was a constant companion. The daily life of a soldier was far from easy. It was an endless cycle of stand-to inspections and chores, punctuated by meals that were often cold and unappetizing. There was little time for rest. 
the soldiers lived in constant anticipation of the whistle that signaled an over-the-top charge into the hellish expanse of No Man's Land. No Man's Land was the deadly void between opposing trenches. It was a barren wasteland, torn apart by artillery and littered with barbed wire and the remnants of fallen soldiers. To venture into No Man's Land was to court death itself. Among the many battles fought in these trenches, two stand out for their brutality, the Battle of the Somme and the Battle of Verdun. The Battle of the Somme, in the summer of 1916, saw one of the bloodiest days in military history, with nearly 60,000 British casualties on the first day alone. The Battle of Verdun, fought in the same year, was a 10-month siege that resulted in over 700,000 casualties. These battles, like many others, were fought in the claustrophobic confines of the trenches, which witnessed not just the horrors of war, but also the resilience and courage of the human spirit. The horrors of trench warfare still echo in the pages of history. In 1918, the war that had ravaged the world for four long years finally came to an end. Imagine a world holding its breath, then slowly exhaling as the guns fell silent and the smoke of battle began to fade. But what led to this moment? What events conspired to finally bring about the end of this devastating conflict? The United States, having initially chosen a stance of neutrality, entered the fray in 1917. Their fresh troops and abundant resources tipped the scales in favor of the Allies. Meanwhile, Russia, grappling with the Bolshevik Revolution, signed a peace treaty with the Central Powers and withdrew from the war. The balance of power was shifting and with it, the course of the war. In the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, the armistice was signed and the guns fell silent. The world breathed a sigh of relief, but the end of the war was not the end of the story. The aftermath was just beginning. The Treaty of Versailles, signed in June 1919, was a peace treaty meant to formally end the state of war. However, the treaty's terms were harsh, particularly for Germany. Germany was held solely responsible for the war and was saddled with heavy reparations. The treaty also restricted Germany's military power and took away significant amounts of their territory. These terms planted the seeds of resentment and anger that would later fuel the fires of World War II. But the Treaty of Versailles was not just about punishing Germany. It was also about reshaping the world. New nations were born from the ashes of empires and the map of Europe was redrawn. The League of Nations was created in an attempt to prevent such a devastating conflict from happening again. The scars of World War I still remain, a stark reminder of the cost of global conflict. These wounds remind us of the importance of peace, the value of diplomacy, and the dire consequences of war. World War I was a turning point in human history, shaping the world as we know it today. This global conflict, sparked by the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand, ignited a powder keg of international tension and alliances. The major players on the world stage, including the Allied powers of the United Kingdom, France and Russia, and the Central Powers, primarily Germany, Austria-Hungary and the Ottoman Empire, found themselves embroiled in a war of unprecedented scale and devastation. The horrors of the trenches, a symbol of the war, reflected the grim reality faced by millions of soldiers. Muddy, disease-ridden and under constant threat of enemy fire, these trenches were the backdrop of an unfathomable human tragedy. The war eventually ended, leaving in its wake a drastically altered world new political landscapes, and an overwhelming loss of life. As we remember the past, we must strive for a future where such devastation never occurs again.